Have you ever asked yourself, how would it be to live in a world where your existence is denied? This is not merely a philosophical question, but a harsh reality for a group of people known as the Rohingya. The Rohingya people, an ethnic Muslim minority, have a long-standing historical presence in Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. Their roots in the region can be traced back centuries, intertwining with the rich tapestry that makes up the country's diverse population. Yet they are often regarded as outsiders, a term that carries not just social stigma, but also legal implications. The Myanmar government over the years has systematically denied the Rohingya people their fundamental right to citizenship. This denial of citizenship is not merely a question of paperwork or bureaucracy, it is a denial of their very identity, their history, and their place in the society. It's a denial that renders them stateless, without protection from the state, and without the basic rights that most of us take for granted. Imagine living in a place where you are considered an alien, where you are excluded from society, where your existence is not only ignored but actively denied. Imagine a life where your identity, your heritage, your very existence is reduced to a political debate, a life where you are constantly living in fear, without any legal protection or rights. This is a reality that the Rohingya people face every day. They are not merely victims of a political or legal dispute, they are victims of a deep-seated prejudice, discrimination, and hate. They are victims of a system that has not only failed to protect them, but has actively participated in their persecution. The Rohingya crisis is not just about the denial of citizenship, it's about the denial of basic human dignity and rights. It's about a group of people who have been rendered invisible in their own land, who have been stripped of their identity, and who have been forced to live in a constant state of fear and uncertainty. The Rohingya people, unfortunately, do not have to imagine this scenario, they are living it. The year 2012 marked a dreadful turn in the lives of the Rohingya people. This year bore witness to escalating tensions between the Rohingya Muslims and the Rakhine Buddhists in Myanmar, culminating in the horrific 2012 Rakhine State Riots. This conflict, rooted in decades of discrimination and prejudice, erupted into a cycle of violence that left an indelible mark on the lives of thousands of Rohingya people. The riots were sparked by the murder of a Buddhist woman, an act that was attributed to three Muslim men. This incident ignited a powder keg of resentment and fear, leading to a wave of communal violence. As the riots spread, homes were burnt, villages razed, and innocent lives lost. The violence was indiscriminate, sparing no one, regardless of age or gender. In the midst of this chaos, the role of the Myanmar government and its security forces came under intense scrutiny. Instead of acting as a buffer against the violence, they were accused by many of not only turning a blind eye, but also actively participating in the atrocities. Reports of security forces joining the mobs, firing on fleeing civilians, and even blocking international aid to the affected areas, started to emerge. These actions, or lack thereof, led to the displacement of tens of thousands of Rohingyas. They were forced to flee their homes, leaving behind a lifetime of memories, in search of safety and refuge. As the violence raged on, the Rohingya people found themselves trapped in a vicious cycle of persecution. The world watched in horror as a community was systematically targeted, their rights trampled upon, and their lives upended. Yet amidst the carnage, the resilience of the Rohingya people shone through. They clung to hope, even as their world crumbled around them. They believed in a future where they could live in peace, free from fear and violence. But as we know, hope alone cannot rewrite history. The violence was just the beginning of a nightmare that was yet to unfold. In 2017 the world watched in horror as reports of mass killings and arson started emerging from Myanmar. A wave of terror had been unleashed on the Rohingya people, a minority Muslim group long marginalized and persecuted in Buddhist-majority Myanmar. This was not an isolated incident but the culmination of years of systematic discrimination. The Rohingya people were denied citizenship, making them stateless in their own land, and faced restrictions on marriage, education and even movement. But in 2017, these simmering tensions exploded into outright violence. The military launched a crackdown following attacks by Rohingya insurgents on police posts. What unfolded was a campaign of violence so brutal, so widespread, that it shocked the world. Villages were burned to the ground, men, women and children were killed indiscriminately, and horrifying stories of sexual violence emerged. The United Nations later described it as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. The scale of the atrocities was unimaginable. In the span of a few months over 700,000 Rohingyas fled to neighboring Bangladesh, 
creating one of the largest refugee crises in recent history. They left behind their homes, their livelihoods, everything they knew, driven out by fear and desperation. But the exodus did not end there. Thousands more sought refuge in other countries, often embarking on perilous journeys by sea, risking everything for a chance at safety. They were not just fleeing the violence, but a systematic campaign aimed at eradicating their very existence in Myanmar. This was ethnic cleansing on a massive scale. The Rohingya people were being wiped out, their culture, their heritage, their very identity was being erased. The world watched, horrified as a people were stripped of their humanity, their dignity, their right to exist. The world was witnessing a human tragedy on a scale seldom seen before. Escaping the violence was only the first hurdle for the Rohingyas. Once safe from the direct threat of violence, they found themselves ensnared in a different kind of struggle, the grueling reality of life in refugee camps. Imagine a city, cramped and overflowing where the luxury of personal space is but a distant dream. That's the reality in the refugee camps in Bangladesh and other countries. These camps, initially designed to offer temporary shelter, have now become semi-permanent homes for hundreds of thousands of Rohingyas. The overcrowded conditions in these camps have given rise to numerous challenges. Basic amenities like clean water and sanitation facilities are scarce. This lack of resources coupled with overcrowding has created a hotbed for diseases. From respiratory infections to diarrheal diseases and malnutrition, health hazards lurk around every corner. And then there's the issue of safety, particularly for women and children. With limited access to education and safe spaces, children are left vulnerable to exploitation. Women too face a heightened risk of gender-based violence and harassment, their plight further exacerbated by the lack of legal protection. Life in these camps is far from the normalcy the Rohingyas once knew. It's a life punctuated by uncertainty, where the future remains as elusive as the past. It's a life where hope is often overshadowed by despair, where dreams are replaced by the harsh realities of survival. And yet, amidst all the hardship, the Rohingyas continue to persevere. They draw strength from their shared experiences, their collective resilience a testament to their enduring spirit. But their struggle is far from over. Survival, in the most basic sense, became a daily struggle for the Rohingyas. While the Rohingyas were facing an existential crisis, the world was grappling with how to respond. The international community watched in horror as the Rohingya people were driven from their homes, their lives torn apart by violence and persecution. Amid this crisis, the United Nations, the world's premier intergovernmental organization, found itself in a position of immense responsibility. The UN's response to the Rohingya crisis has been multifaceted. It has provided critical humanitarian aid, delivering food, water, and medical assistance to the hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees living in squalid camps in Bangladesh. Yet the UN's role goes beyond providing immediate relief. It has also taken on the task of shining a light on the atrocities committed against the Rohingyas, documenting evidence of human rights abuses, and calling for justice. But the UN's efforts have not been without criticism. Many argue that the international body has been too slow to act, that its response has been hampered by bureaucracy and political maneuvering. Critics point out that despite the UN's calls for accountability, the Myanmar government has faced little concrete repercussion for its actions. And it's not just the UN. The broader international community has also been criticized for its response. While there has been an outpouring of sympathy and outrage, many feel that this has not translated into meaningful action. Governments around the world have been hesitant to impose sanctions on Myanmar, fearful of destabilizing the region or harming their own economic interests. Nonetheless, aid efforts continue. Humanitarian organizations around the world have rallied to provide support to the Rohingya refugees, offering a glimmer of hope amid the despair. They have worked tirelessly to provide essential services to advocate for the rights of the Rohingyas and to keep the world's attention focused on this ongoing crisis. The global response however has been a mix of sympathy, outrage, and inaction. It's a stark reminder that while the world can rally in the face of human suffering, turning empathy into action is a far more difficult task. As we look to the future, the question remains, what can be done to resolve the Rohingya crisis? The path forward is not an easy one. It's a journey that will require commitment, compassion, and most importantly, collective action. The first step is exerting international pressure on the Myanmar government. World leaders, international institutions and global citizens must unite to condemn the ethnic cleansing and demand accountability. The world can no longer turn a blind eye to this grave injustice, a clear violation of human rights. Secondly, 
we need to explore international legal actions. This could involve bringing the case to the International Criminal Court or initiating an independent international investigation. The goal is clear, justice for the Rohingya people. A world that respects human rights is one where atrocities are not only condemned but also prosecuted. In addition to these we must also focus on improving conditions in the refugee camps. While this is a stopgap measure, it's an essential one. Charities, NGOs, and international organizations need to work together to provide better living conditions, access to education, healthcare, and most importantly, a sense of hope. Simultaneously, efforts should be made to initiate dialogues for safe, voluntary, and dignified repatriation. This is a long-term solution that involves diplomatic negotiations, ensuring the safety of the Rohingyas and granting them the rights they have been denied for so long. While these steps may seem daunting, they are not impossible. It will take time, dedication, and the collective will of the global community. It is not just about resolving a crisis, it's about standing up for what's right, for human dignity, and for justice. The path to justice and dignity for the Rohingyas is fraught with challenges, but it is a path that must be taken. The Rohingya crisis is not just a story of ethnic cleansing, it's a test of our collective humanity. It challenges us to rise above our differences, to reach across borders, and to extend a hand to those in need. There are many ways you can answer this call to action. Arm yourself with knowledge, learn more about the crisis, delve into the stories of the Rohingya people, and inform others. Awareness is the first step towards change. Consider supporting organizations that are working tirelessly to provide aid to the Rohingya refugees. Your donations, however small, can contribute to providing food, shelter, and medical assistance to those in dire need. But your actions can go beyond financial contributions. Advocate for a political response to this crisis, encourage your leaders to take a stand, to condemn these atrocities, and to push for a resolution that respects the rights and dignity of the Rohingya people. Remember, in the face of injustice, silence is complicity. Stand up for the Rohingyas, stand up for humanity.